franchise quarterback. Uh, everybody wants to have one. And if you're going to compete for a conference championship, you most likely need one. Does UCLA have one in Dorian Thompson Robinson? We've got Tony Syracuse on the line from last word on college football to talk up the Bruins. Tony, how are you? Hey, Mark. How you doing? I'm doing just fine. Uh, DTR, yeah. second rated dual threat quarterback coming out of high school. For people that don't follow recruiting, uh, you don't have to be a genius to know if you're second best <laughs> in your evaluation that you're you're pretty darn good. So, and beyond that, 36th rated player in the nation, regardless of position, according to 247 Sports Composite. This is rarefied territory yep. in high school football recruiting. So the sky was the limit. He was expected to, to just be a uh, dynamic player at this level. He progressed this past season, but maybe not to the degree that many had hoped. Yeah, you know what? You get a lot of hit and miss with DTR, um, you know, in his two years at UCLA. And I think that's part of what mystifies the fan base. You see some games where you're like, ah, there it is. This is the guy we've been waiting for. And then just as easily the next week or, heck, maybe even the next series <laughs> in the same game. You're like, what in goodness name was that, you know, to uh, to use John Wooden's, you know, what he considered his swear words. Goodness gracious sakes alive. What was that, you know? Um, it's, it's like you said, look, number two dual threat quarterback in the entire country out of – the thousands of high school quarterbacks in the country. This guy was number two and the number 36 player overall in the entire country at Bishop Gorman. Now, if you if you want to be on the there, – there's the side – UCLA fan base is very split on pretty much everything these days, whether it's Chip Kelly, whether it's the food at the Rose Bowl. When you're losing like this, your fan base is split on everything, you know. I don't like the stripes on the shoulders on the jersey. I want to go back to what we had five years ago. They're split on everything. They are split on DTR, all right? And the side that says, hang in there, hang in there, this kid barely has ever played quarterback. He had one year as a starter at Bishop Gorman High in Las Vegas, which, you know, has spent a lot of time as an elite-level high school football program. Well, yes and no. His junior year, he was a starting wide receiver, and he was the backup quarterback, and he played quite a bit because Bishop Gorman blew out so many teams in their league. So he did have some experience. Has only been a starter that one year at Bishop Gorman before coming to UCLA. Now, when he came into UCLA in 2018, he did not win the starting job um, right out of camp. The starter in week one was your buddy, Wilton Spate. Um, and so, and then Spate got hurt in week one. So DTR gets it for a little bit, you know, from out of default, but he only played nine games that year. He played 11 this last year. He missed more than a game, really a game and a half because of injury. Um, so we're a little worried if you're thinking clearly, or a little worried about his durability. Um, you know, when he gets flushed out of the pocket, when he takes the big hits, um, but also the stats are just so all over the place. Um, I mean, that first year he threw for 1300 yards in his, in his nine games and seven touchdowns and four interceptions. And he completed 57% of his passes. Eh, not that good, but you write it off new coach, right? The new chip Kelly offense, you're learning everything new, everything, you know, and he also frankly had a deer in the headlight look quite often you know, on the field. So you go to 2019 and, you know, like I said, he missed, he played 10, 10 plus games, missed a game and a half and he throws for 2,700 yards. So definitely an improvement, but 2,700 yards in college football, not that big a deal, frankly, that's, you can find that anywhere, you know, even the lower level programs, uh, 21 touchdowns, 12 INTs. Ouch. That is, that is a poor ratio and a 60% completion rate. You need to have that completion rate in the mid 60s or higher, quite frankly, or you're just not, as you call it, a franchise quarterback. In this day of college football, you know, look, UCLA is not chucking it downfield. They're not the Al Davis Raiders going vertical. All right. It's, it's, 
a pretty safe offense in terms of hitting receivers in the slot. Their tight ends for the past two years have not been the traditional tight ends. They've been big receivers, you know, who can go over the middle and take the hit, but also block. They're not the big tight end who's going to catch two passes a game. They're viable receivers. You've had running backs who can catch out of the backfield. Demetric Felton, for instance, you know, playing receiver and running back. The weapons have been there for him, but he is so mistake prone. And it's not just the interceptions. It's those moments where what were you thinking? It's I, I, I remember off the top of my head as we're sitting here thinking about it, maybe three to four times last year where he fumbled without even being hit. He's just, he's scrambling. He's trying to do too much. Carrying the ball, it hits his leg. It hits his other arm, whatever the case. And you, you turn the ball over without even being hit, without even there being a real play. It's one thing if a guy's getting hit downfield and he fumbles. Hey, look, you were making a positive yardage play. He's fumbling without even getting hit. He's got a propensity when he's under when he's under duress to run backwards, which makes the the sack yardage even worse. A three or four yard sack becomes a ten yard sack because his first instinct is to backpedal to try and buy himself more real estate to work with. But he is not the guy, or has yet to show he is the guy who's going to roll out and throw downfield on the run, or the guy who is going to look, see nothing there, and tuck and run. He is, he's not Brett Hundley, which UCLA fans got used to, you know, uh, before the Josh Rosen era as a guy who, hey, there's nothing there. I can tuck it. I can run. I can cut. I can do all these things. DTR does not have those skills. So he tends to run around the pocket when the logical, when the logical play is chuck it out of bounds and live for the next play. He, he's, he's trying so hard to make something where there is nothing. And, and the turnovers are just brutal. So we know, Tony, that he's not going to be have that uh, primary back in Joshua Kelly that is so reliable uh, that maybe the more of the focus of the offense is going to be on him. Do, uh, you know, you touched upon the complementary aspects of the offense. Do you think it's been – to his detriment or have they been fairly supportive and what's the prospect for the future of weapons on the outside and in the backfield? Yeah, I think, you know, UCLA is going to be a backfield by, you know, running back by committee in the upcoming season. You don't have that guy who's going to get the 25 to 30 carries for you with Josh Kelly and be the guy that, you know, you, you rely on inside the 10 yard line. There's going to be different people coming at you. Part of the problem, and in all fairness to DTR, part of the problem is his offensive line has been fair to abysmal, you know, any, and anywhere in between for the last two years. He's had some decent players uh, like Chris Murray at guard, but Chris Murray left and is, has moved on to another school in the, in, through the transfer portal. Boss Tagaloa was a very valuable center, but Tagaloa – his eligibility is out. He did not get drafted in the NFL, didn't sign an undrafted free agent contract either. So, you know, now now we're kind of making up an offensive line again. And, you know, the offensive line has done, at best, a fair job of protecting them. But to the offensive line's credit, they can only hold their guys off for so long while DTR is running around, you know, scrambling, trying to find something where there's really nothing. He's got plenty of receivers to work with. He's got he's got huge skill at receivers. Um, he just lost who probably would have been the or might have been the starting tight end Jordan Wilson, uh, who just transferred to Florida State. But UCLA had five tight ends on the roster. They're fine at tight end. They'll 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 do just fine. Um, the challenge is he's got to come through because there's not a lot behind him either. You know, last year when he got hurt, they went to Austin Burton, who had not played yet. But you know, Bert, Burton did all right for the game and a half. He was in there. It was fine. He was he was an amenable backup. Austin Burton has transferred. You know, he's one of 70-plus players that has bolted in the Chip Kelly era, and he has left. Um, when you look at the two weeks that they had a spring camp before the virus shut down the school um, – you're probably looking at Colson Yankoff, the transfer from Washington, 
as the most likely backup and a guy who's yet to play a college game um, and has, you know, has never taken a college snap because beyond that, you're looking at, um, you know, you're looking at Parker McGuire, the, the uh, kid, the freshman out of New Hampshire, but he's a totally different style of thrower. I don't know if Chip Kelly is ready to make those changes in the offense. If you got to put him in, you know, that kid's a six, six strong arm thrower. Um, and you're looking at Chase Griffin, who two years ago was the Texas high school football player of the year and is completely lost in the quarterback rotation at UCLA. You watch him at camp, and you know, it's not that he's 5'9, 5'10, and you know, slight at built, it's that he's that and doesn't have the strong arm to go downfield consistently. He's good with the short and intermediate passes. So there's not a lot behind DTR at the quarterback position if DTR doesn't find more success. After a marginal effort in uh, 2019, as UCLA finished at four and eight and DTR pretty much um, displayed marginal stats to uh, go along with the, uh, the record Bruin fans uh, hoping for him to break out and uh, fulfill the great potential that he showed coming out of Bishop Gorman, Tony Syracuse on last word on college football. We encourage you to stop on by there, check out his work and everyone else in covering the game we all love. Tony, we appreciate you stopping by and laying down the knowledge the last few days. Always glad to hang out with the voice of college football.